Hello, I'm Ida Terry, and you are listening to or tune in to Windsor 411. Today, our guest is Christine Pilati, like the exercise Pilati. I'm going to tell you a little bit of st a little story about Christine and I. We met in prison. We were not <laughs> inmates now. We were not incarcerated. We both uh, work there. She works as a volunteer, and she does life coaching, uh, and she does it with offenders. So, again, help me welcome Christine Pilati. So, Christine, how are you today? I'm very good. Thanks for having me, uh, Ida. Thanks for being here. Let me start out with uh, asking you about life coaching. Tell us a little bit about how you became interested in it and um, just sort of the process. What, you, what, what do you go through okay. when you provide that service to a client? Okay, um, so as a, uh, I'm a certified life coach and uh, I was trained uh, from a, actually from a, country, a company out of uh, Australia. Really? An American couple brought it to New York and um, I had been running a nonprofit previously and then I left the nonprofit and I saw a little ad in the New York Times that said, want to be a life coach. I didn't know what it was, never heard of it before, but I called the phone number. And two weeks later, I was in New York City in this class, life coaching class. And that was almost 15 years ago. Really? Yeah. And I completely love what I do. Uh, my interest was really in helping people to find their mission in life, to find work that was meaningful, mm -hmm. and to make changes in their lives, uh, to improve the quality of their lives. And uh, I feel like I, along the way, I found my mission. Really? Yes, because I really love what I do. Um, being self-employed is not easy. And, you know, I've been doing that for, like I said, almost 15 years. And, but I feel like I get to wake up every day and choose how I spend my time, who I spend my time with, the, which you mentioned a few minutes ago, the volunteer work that I do in the prison is something that I do uh, on my own time. I totally believe in making changes to our criminal justice system. I love working with the guys. Uh, I've been doing that for the last year, but actually for more than 20 years, I've been mentoring somebody in prison. and. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I get to do, I work with people on the outside, people who are interested in changing their careers, um, as well as uh, people on the inside who could use some help. You talk about working with people on the inside. What are some of the challenges that you encounter working on the inside? Okay. Um, well, you've been on the inside yes. for many years, yes, a lot I longer have. than I have, so you certainly know some of the challenges. Um, you know, I, I think that one of the challenges is that um, the facility that I'm in is a, a transient place, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I might start out with 15 guys and I might end up with five. Uh, this last uh, series, because I work with them for four weeks, as you know. Mm -hmm. And um, once a week, I'm there every Monday morning for about an hour and a half. And then uh, we do four sessions. And then when it's done, I get another group of guys. And this series, uh, I had nine guys that started. I ended with three. They get transferred. They get uh, released. There's all different reasons. You know, sometimes they just don't feel like showing up. Monday morning, I'm there. Sometimes they're not. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, but mostly, I have found it to be really great. They are very engaged. Uh, I make sure that it's not just about me, you know, uh, telling them how to live their lives or try, trying to correct their behavior. It's, it's much more um, engaging. They contribute a lot of information, and uh, the ones that show up actually seem to be really engaged. Yeah. I want to actually thank you for coming in and providing that service, because what it does is really helps us to uh, 
provide them with an array of programs and and volunteers just really I, I can't say enough about the value of a volunteer and so what I see is that you helping them we helping ourselves and the community at large I mean Thank I you. really really do appreciate it because providing services inside is quite different but um, let's go back to life coaching how is it different from counseling because I am a family therapist and I spent quite a few years doing that training and I'm kind of curious in terms of how, what you do as a life, a life coach, how is it different from what I do as a family therapist or as a behavior therapist out in the community? That's a great question. Uh, I actually get that question a lot. Um, I'm not a therapist, so I can't speak to exactly what you do, but um, the, the main difference that I see is that a therapist uh, might talk a little more about somebody's past and experiences they've gone through and a, a little more focused on the past, whereas coaching is much more focused on, so what are you going to do about it? Okay. You know, so let's get you into action. Let's help you to create a vision for your life. What is it that you want for your life? Okay. Um, so it's, it's a little more, um, it's proactive. It's mm -hmm. not me just telling them what to right. do. Um, I do give them feedback. Um, I do it with permission. I always ask them, do you, wow. do you really want to hear my opinion? Ah, okay. <laughs> you know, it's not just me blurting out, you know, well, I think you should do this or that. No. And it's really, uh, the coaching that I was trained in is uh, called brain-based coaching. Brain-based. So it's really about helping people to think about um, how, the changes that they want to make. Okay. And to think about the, um, the outcomes that they want. Mm -hmm. So when people are in a position of uh, having their own choices and not having it thrust upon them, mm. they're much more likely to stick with it. Right. And the other th thing about coaching that I found, and I've actually been coached myself a number of times, is that we all think that, you know, no matter how much we want to achieve something, Yes. If we don't have that accountability built in, mm. well, I might do it tomorrow, might do it next week, I might not do it at all, even though I really want to. Mm. But when you know you're going to be meeting with your coach next Tuesday at 9 a.m., you <laughs> yes. do your homework. Yes. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. You, you know, or at least you are aware of the fact that somebody's going to be asking you about it, somebody's going to be holding your feet to the fire and, and really like making you be accountable. Mm -hmm. And it's not about making you feel guilty or wrong or bad if you didn't do something, but it's about helping you take a look at, hmm, maybe I'm sabotaging myself by mm -hmm. not actually doing the things that I really say I want to do. Mm -hmm. Today's uh, conversation with the guys at the, uh, at the prison was around, what are you committed to? Mm -hmm. You know, it's about asking questions that help people to think about what they really want for their lives. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. about me just saying, you know what you should do? <laughs> you know, you shouldn't have done that. It's mm. over and done. Yeah, that's true. And it is a little bit like counseling in a way. When I think of what you said, you ask permission. That's kind of what motivation interviewing is about. Motivation interviewing is about asking permission before you make those suggestions. It's coming along, it's coming beside the client as opposed to sitting in the position of being the expert yes. because most people are expert on their own lives exactly. and uh, we're not even though we might have gone to school for all of those years. Um, I know you do coaching at the prison and that's volunteer. Tell me about some of your business clients uh, without okay. necessarily giving their name but what right, you right. do with them. Right, okay. So. Um, my business clients are uh, sort of two different groups of people. Um, some are people who are interested in starting a business, maybe have not started it at all, or have sort of dipped their toe in the water and, and really need some guidance. And that's when I really uh, wear the hat of a consultant a lot more okay. than when I'm doing like a life coaching thing or even a career coaching. because. Um, there's a lot of the nuts and bolts about starting a business that people really need and many people 
especially really small businesses. I'm talking about micro businesses where it's a one person operation or maybe just a few people. Mm -hmm. um, many people don't know where to start. Yes. You know, and what I find is that they often start in the middle, meaning they don't lay a foundation, <laughs> maybe they don't write a business plan, they don't think through their marketing plan, yes. if they even have a marketing plan. Mm -hmm. So they, they are so excited about their business, they often start with a business name and they go and they run and they <laughs> make business cards and maybe stationery <laughs> or buy a domain name and create a website and then they realize that all of the things that really go into laying the foundation for your business, yes. doing the financials, you know, laying out exactly how you're going to work with a client or how you're going to be selling your inventory. Some of that stuff sometimes kind of falls by the wayside. And when you're a small business owner, you wear so many different hats. And mm. most people, including myself, are not good at every single aspect yeah. of it. Yeah, I understand exactly what you mean because I started a um, 501c3 nonprofit a few years ago and the business plan was sheer drudgery. It's like, oh, <laughs> I wanted to contract it out, but you know, it just, that wasn't the right thing to do. Uh, but it was definitely hard and I could have used someone like you. Where were you then? <laughs> well, you could have helped me with that process. Well, I actually have, <laughs> uh, you know, I actually helped start a nonprofit that um, came to Hartford uh, as all volunteers. Oh, um, really? Back uh, in 1995 they started. Um, and I was the first paid staff person, so I really like helped to get it up and running, you know, really off the ground in okay. terms of, uh, of having a, you know, like I said, a, a paid staff right. and a, a larger program. And uh, as a coach, I've helped a number of people start small nonprofits and it's very rewarding yes. uh, because that is part of my background. Uh, I really love to work with, again, it really falls into the, the mission driven. Mm -hmm. I consider myself a social entrepreneur a social a entrepreneur? social entrepreneur yes first time I've heard that too. yeah because I really believe in making changes in the world yeah uh, I don't believe it's all about the dollar mm. um, but we have to make a living yeah so that's why laying a foundation whether it's for a nonprofit or a for-profit business is so important okay and I also understand life coaches also work one-on-one -on -one with individuals as they maybe transition from one career to another or perhaps from someone who's employed to being un I don't want to say unemployed but retirement because there's some challenges associated yes. with with those uh, changes yes. or those roles I should say Yes, okay. I work with a number of, I, I want to say, older clients older that clients. are, you know, m maybe in their 50s or even early 60s that have had these jobs, you know, maybe in corporate America. I've worked with a number of lawyers, different professionals that want to make a change uh, in industry, sometimes to the nonprofit world, mm. and don't know how to start, don't know um, how their skills can be transferable. And um, sometimes they feel, you know, the sting of age discrimination. Mm. They worry that people are not going to hire them uh, because of their age. And they feel like, you know, how can I compete with a 20, you know, two-year-old person getting out of college? Yes. You know, especially in terms of the... Um, you know, financial, you know, if you've been making a lot of money and now you want to, you know, go into a field that you really don't have any experience in, you know, are you going to be willing to take a major pay cut or whatever? And, and I tell my clients that are in, in that category that, first of all, when you're an, an older adult and you've worked for many years, you are not coming at it from a place like a, a kid getting out of college mm. because you actually have transferable skills. Yes. You have a whole history of a work ethic and being able to think on your feet and drawing from experiences so that whatever the new thing that you're going into, there's a very good chance that you're going to be able to draw from a whole lot of things that you've done in your past. So you're not just starting from scratch. So in a sense, you sort of help them with their confidence too. Kind of what we very, do. Very yeah. important. Yeah. Very important. So when I think of life coaching, I think of this old Home Depot commercial. 
you can do it and we can help. And that's kind of what I think of you when you when you talk about coaching people. Could you tell us about the most unique client that you've ever coached? And um, of course, we are keeping the client's name confidential. Right. Uh, we're just right. going to talk in generalities. Right. All right. Um, I, I guess I would have to say, uh, and it's not even just one person. It's it's been a few clients that. Um, were really not a great at a great place in their lives, and um, through the coaching, and I don't want to take all the credit, but I'll take a little of the credit, helped them really turn their lives around. And some of them were people either heading to prison, oh wow, or already in prison, and through coaching and mentoring, because they're very closely related. When I coach people, I'm, I'm often I'm also acting as a mentor. Okay. Um, really help them to turn their lives around and, um, and become really successful. And I'm yeah. not just talking about financially successful. I mean, that's yeah. just one component of success. Right. But really feeling like a contributing member of society. And that, for me, has been um, has really led to my interest in doing the volunteer work at the DOC. Okay. So you said you coached a person who's about to go into prison? Well, a, a couple of people who were sort of living on the edge wow. and, and could have ended up there. Well, what kind um, of things do you guys talk about? Um, again, about the commitment of what's important in their lives. And particularly wow. for people that have children, yes. and some of these people that I'm talking about yes. have kids. Yes. Um, you know, questions like, what kind of legacy do you want to leave for your kids? Ooh. You know, Big one. what do you want? You know, uh, as a parent, what do you want your kids' lives to be like? Oh. Because we know about the cycle. Yeah. You know, okay. of people who who go to prison, and yeah. so often their kids follow them in. Huh. Um, what about someone who might be going through a relationship issue and perhaps dealing with a divorce, perhaps dealing with the death of a long-term uh, relationship, uh, a person? Mm -hmm. uh, do you help them with that process as well? Well, you know, that really has more to do with my life coaching. Okay. Um, you know, business and capacity. And I will tell you that in the first several years, I actually did more life coaching. Really? Yeah, and then I, I my business, I really, um, I, I really realized that I needed to specialize a little bit more and narrow my focus because I believe you can't be all things to all people. Hmm. However, early on, um, I did, uh, I did do life coaching, and I was coaching a woman who uh, for business coaching, and in the middle of the coaching. Her husband died. Oh wow! And she had two young uh, children, and I coached her for probably a year or two, and that was a, a big part of the coaching was really to help her through that grieving process and 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 all of that. And it's not something you ever get over, right. but it was, uh, it was, and it was a very interesting. Um, coaching experience for me because it really called upon my, um, like everything in me, to especially the, the first couple of sessions after um, her husband died, and it was like a, it was a tragic death that was totally unexpected, wow. you know, at like he was 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to really figure out how I was gonna help this person when I had never experienced anything like that, mm -hmm. and it was um, it was actually a very important okay. um, experience for both of us. What I'd like to do, and I should have asked permission, could I take notes? Because sometimes, if I don't write it down, I won't remember to ask yes. you. And so I'm just kind of jotting down additional questions that I that I want to ask you. Yes, no problem. The youngest client you've ever coached. Okay. Um, the youngest client was a young girl that was, at the time, uh, I think she was about 14. Mm. I had coached her father. And oh, then I, wow. Yep. And then I had coached her 
father and mother. Um, family affair. A family, yeah. It's like you're a family therapist. A, a lot of my <laughs> clients uh, come from word of mouth. So okay. like once you've coached somebody, often they're, um, you know, they're going to recommend you to their family members or their friends. And uh, so this girl who was about 14 at the time, um, I coached her and uh, she was very interested in fashion as like a lot of teenage girls are. <laughs> but ultimately she ended up going to a school in New York City for fashion design, oh, wow. ended up going to Milan, Italy for oh. some uh, wow. training and events, yeah, ah. and ended up working in New York City uh, in the fashion ah. world. So that was pretty so exciting. Do you have famous clients? Famous? Yeah, someone who really <laughs> made it, and, um, they, and they now credit you with helping them well, with that process. I, you know, uh, I don't know if they're famous, but I have a number of clients who've written books. Really? Uh, yep. Oh, wow. Uh, one actually last year wrote a novel that got published. Um, oh, oh. Yep. Uh, I've probably had a dozen clients write books. Wow. Yeah, different, you know, some are nonfiction yeah. books, um, some are self published, some are, have been, you know, published by, um, you know, big wow. publishing houses. Yeah. And, I, you know, I've also coached a number of people that are, let's say, well known in our community, maybe mm -hmm. not nationally, yeah. but, um, and um, had a number of political clients. Uh, uh, oh, wow. And, that's as far as I can say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, in the process, when you're doing this life coaching, are there times when you have to refer them out to someone because their issues are beyond your skill level? Absolutely, that's okay. a great question, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing is, um, I'm not a therapist, mm -hmm. and there are times when I meet with people that um, I feel like you know, they really need some, um, you know, assistance or services beyond what I offer. Uh, usually, it doesn't mean that they can't still work with me right. because I'm working with them around issues of, you know, maybe, you know, finding a new job, you know, uh, finding a new career, starting a small business, those kinds of things. Um, but maybe they need some mental health help or, okay. um, you know, addiction services okay. or all kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, they just may not be ready to work with me. So maybe okay. they need to go and, and take care of something else and okay. then you know come back and do the coaching. But mm -hmm. yes, I have referred people a number of times to other services. And when you work with businesses as well as individuals, how do you charge, by the hour? Um, it's it's the, the breakdown would be an hourly rate, but usually it's a uh, like a three month initial series. Okay. So they would commit for twelve weeks. Okay. Um, I have clients that I've worked with for that maybe started with a three month commitment that went on, and you know I coached for one two years. I have some clients that I've just hit the five year mark. Wow. Recently, yeah. And those are business clients. And that, when I was talking before about the two different kinds of business clients, there's the startup business that really needs the hand holding to get them off the ground. Okay. And then there's small business uh, clients that they might need help with, um, you know, staffing issues, mm -hmm. you know, policy, policy and procedure manuals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a background in uh, labor relations. I did yeah. some a lot of union stuff, um, <laughs> kind of way back when I was in okay. college. But it it was really valuable to uh, what I do today when I work with clients that have issues with their staff, um, mm -hmm. or just in terms of uh, I really like to help people to you know think about the importance of staff mm -hmm. and how it's so important to treat them well, to pay them well. Mm. Yes. You know, I like the pay part. Definitely yeah. like the pay part. How often do you meet with your clients? You said initially is a three three, three month, month. Yep. And uh, you meet with them once a week. Um, usually, it's between sixty and ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and there's also clients that um, don't hire me for a whole three month package that just want my help with either a dilemma. 
that they're struggling with, mm -hmm. and they might want to just pick my brain for an hour and you know just do some brainstorming mm -hmm. together. There's clients that need help with a resume, you know, um, or cover letter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes clients, uh, I've done um, LinkedIn profiles for people. Ah. Oh. You know, yeah. So they already have a, a good resume. A lot of times, what I see with LinkedIn is people will take their resume and they'll put it on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I say, LinkedIn is real estate that really needs to be different than your resume because you can put a link to your resume on there. Um, and you know, LinkedIn is a little more. Uh, you can tell a little bit more of a story. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I help people with things like that. Okay, I remember what you said about commitment. I remember when I was asking you some questions regarding my um, 501c3, and I remember thinking, you know, I often see you on Mondays, and you just kind of gave me some interesting information and. Friday afternoon, I'm sweating trying to get the answer <laughs> because I know I'm going to see you Monday morning and I don't want to say, you know, I didn't do my assignment. That's the accountability. Uh, yes, that is definitely the accountability. I remember that. So, again, um, I really, really enjoyed having you here. Um, tell us a little bit about where your business is located and if someone wanted to get in touch with you, how would they? Okay, that's great. Um, I actually, uh, I have a home office these days, and um, I, a lot of my work is on the phone or okay. through Skype. Okay. I actually worked for a relocation Skype. company for a while, for about four years. So I've coached people from all over the world via wow. Skype. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so you don't have to be necessarily be local to work with me. And uh, I have a website called strategiclifeplans.com. Okay. So if people went there, if they were wanted to get a hold of me, um, you know, they can All just right. shoot me an email or call right. me. Well, thank you very much for being with us here. And perhaps I'll invite you back. Well, thank you very much for having me. All right, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Ida Terry, and please join us again on Windsor 411. Thank you.